Welcome to the Awakening Women podcast. I'm your host, Leanne Oten, and for almost a decade, I have been a transformation coach and therapist. This podcast is all about lifting the veil of consciousness and awakening to the truth. It is also about helping you to raise the bar in all areas of your life and relationships by starting with you. If you're ready to take back your personal power and reclaim your life, you have come to the right place. I'm so glad that you're here. So let's get started with today's episode. If you wear a fitness tracking device like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, whatever, there's several of them out there, I want you to do one thing today if you are not already doing this. I want you to go into the dashboard and look at your history over, say, like the last several months, or you can even do, I think most of them can do a year span, and just get your average resting heart rate. Your resting heart rate is the key marker for your heart health and in doing this work and looking at the physical physiological symptoms of being in an abusive toxic or narcissistic relationship this is one of the the key health markers that is the most dangerous for women especially in our perimenopausal years or menopausal years as our risks already increase for heart disease So if that is you and you're in that age bracket, doesn't mean that that can't happen earlier. Of course it can. This, there's other factors in there. Of course, your fitness, how much you exercise, what you eat, your overall weight, if you're in a healthy range there. Um, But stress and your resting heart rate, it impacts your blood pressure, inflammation, and risk of dying from some kind of a heart disease or heart attack issue. So if that's not enough to terrify you, um, we need to look at it seriously as if you have a higher than normal resting heart rate and you're in one of these relationships, then the link is there. And I want you to take this seriously because the shocking thing that I read, and this is when I was experiencing some pretty severe heart related issues several years ago that really got my attention and it was worrying me because I had a high resting heart rate and I ate well. I wasn't, I'm not a sedentary person. Like I, I'm always moving, walking every day. I exercise. I've increased a lot of that over the last year, just getting more fit, but overall like pretty healthy person, very conscious of what I'm eating. And this was all going on. And, you know, long story short, it was enough to get my, my attention where I started going down this the whole rabbit hole of like resting heart rates and what's healthy, what's not. And when you think about it, we have a certain number of heartbeats in our lifetime. And once our heart wears out, then we're gone, right? And so when we think about the heart as a muscle, that it only has a certain amount of beats in it to give and eventually will wear out, then we want to lean into having the lowest possible heart rate that we can. So the the range is kind of very broad. Like when you look at it, like it's like 60 to 100 beats per minute. That's a huge range. But what the average really is and where the the health markers are where we want it to be is around 62 beats per minute or less. And it can obviously vary in there, dip back and forth. But if you have a resting heart rate that's more than 76 beat per minute, that you are 26% more likely to have a heart attack or die from one than those with the lower resting heart rate of 62 beats per minute. This is a quote from Harvard Health. So we want to get our resting heart rate below 76 beats per minute. So this is kind of a health check episode, but also for you to check in with yourself and see where you might need to be making some, number one, some health tweaks, but also to be seeing what the connection is with your relationship situation. Okay, there's a connection. So if you are noticing that you have a high resting heart rate when you're just sitting at your desk, like your heart is is, you know, in the 80s or 90s or over 100, that is 
danger zone, right? So regardless of what you do, whether it's healthy lifestyle changes, all of those things, that's going to be part of it. But if you are experiencing stuff in your relationship that is triggering your anxiety, that's triggering trauma responses, that's triggering your fight or flight, and it's causing the the consistent heart racing episodes or just a higher resting heart rate, that that is putting your life at risk and it is shortening your lifespan literally every day. Because the more that your heart is beating in a given time, you take that over the span of a year, you know, that's taking away from years of your life because your heart is having to work that much harder over that year, if that makes sense. It's a way to, to kind of wake up and realize like if you're wanting to live a long and healthy life where you're not dealing with heart disease and high blood pressure and diabetes and all the things that go along with, with having these cardiovascular issues, then we have to look at it holistically, mind, body, spirit, right? Your emotional health, your relational health, your environment. All of these things are obviously factors to health. But if you are in a relationship that is causing chronic fight or flight and stress and cortisol surges, and from all of that, the stress causing inflammation and causing your heartbeat to be irregular or too fast, then this is shortening your healthy lifespan or lifespan altogether. Just as a quick check-in, take a look at your average resting heart rate, see where you're at. Of course, this isn't the only marker for health, but it's a biggie, right? Like it's a big one. We need to be keeping an eye on that and other markers, of course, that we are watching with regular testing to see where we're at. But I think that the heart rate, the heart rate average of resting heart rate is a really good way to tell where you're at as far as that goes. And it is more motivation to get yourself in a healthier position, a healthier place, a better place. This is the mind-body connection to our relationships that our relationships can literally make or break us. It is not a decision to take lightly. And this literally is proving the adage that the heart will always tell you. Your heart will always lead the way. And so checking in with your heart health, like how, how are you doing and how are your stress levels? Like us as women, I mean, stress affects everyone, but women are more adversely affected by ongoing chronic stress. So we need to take it seriously. And one way to start with that is checking in with your your heart rate. If you don't have one of those fitness trackers, I think they're a really good investment to have just for that reason. It tracks obviously your activity, which is great. But a lot of them have a lot of different like health health trackers that you can use as not as a diagnostic or anything, but just as an awareness tool of where you're, where you're going and how, how it's going for you. And then you can take those analytics and decide if you want to take that to a doctor to get further testing done, if there's any issues, but it is a good way to kind of see where, where you're at. And one of you in, um, in the group, when I posted about this, had well a couple of you um, answered one of you had said that sitting at your desk your heart rate is uh, 106 that is danger zone right that's that's like you need to do something right away to rectify that Um, and then another said the first two weeks of separation my watch alerted me to my new trend of resting heart rate down 10 beats per minute on average then once then up once I realized what kind of person I was trusting and sharing my life with you will see the your heart rate changing very likely. I think most of us are affected by it, but when you are going back and forth, you're having text wars, or you're having a, a conversation that's turning into gaslighting and crazy making, you will notice your heart rate is changing. So have a look at your watch. Watch your heart rates go through the roof with, with those conflicts, right? So that just goes to show you and know that every time that's happening, you are using up heartbeats. If that's not enough to motivate you to make a change in your life, I don't know what is. I know it certainly motivated me when I started to see very real outward signs of what 
stress was doing to my physical body. All right, so that wraps up what I wanted to share in this quickie episode. I just wanted to make sure because I know not all of you are in our Facebook group where we're talking about this. You might not be on my email list where I will be talking about this. So I wanted to make sure that I have it here on the podcast because it's that important and I want you all to be healthy and live long, healthy lives. That starts with changing your lifestyle. It starts with the inner work. It starts with looking at your environment, your relationships, and the connection to how healthy or unhealthy you feel and how you're living your life. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Awakening Women podcast. If you love this show and it has served you and helped you on your journey, please take a moment right now and leave a rating and review in iTunes and Spotify. If you'd like more daily content, videos, and inspiration, come on over and join me at Awakening Women Support Official over on Instagram, where we can connect and you can continue your transformation and growth journey. And I'll see you online. Take care.